Hello and welcome to Burnt Miss, a five-part video series where I drop some Halo 1 speedrun knowledge bombs on you all. Today's video is about spreadsheets. I've made a spreadsheet here that's going to calculate sensitivity MNIPs for you. Now I know it looks pretty complicated, and well yeah, it is complicated. That's why I'm making this video. Let's get into it. Let's start with a practical example, the cafe bump on the moor. This is the main page, and here in the top left is where we're going to do all our inputs. Over on this target angle sheet, I've got the range of view angles that will give you the cafe bump to the far door. So let's copy paste these values into the main sheet. Next are the natural clockwise turns that I talked about in the last video. To make it easier to count them, I have added a readout to the sensitivity drift overlay that counts them for you. For cafe bump, the value is zero. Our last cutscene was the start of the moor, and we're playing solo. These two options determine the normalized starting view angle here. Then all we have to do is enable the toggle. It might take a while for it all to load, but here on the far left are the main sensitivity values from 0.1 to 10. We can see that the sensitivity values we already know work for Cafe Bump do work. Here's 2.1, 3.1, and 5.0. Now to explain the rest of the columns, I'll reuse some of the graphics from the last video here. For example, for 5.0. The minute angle is where the minute puts us in the range, assuming there's no drift. The leeways are the distance to the edges of the target range. Pretty neat, huh? Anyway, the next thing I want to talk about, I was playing around in the menu because I'm just a nerd, and I discovered something interesting. So we all know that your sensitivity can only go from 0.1 to 10 in increments of 0.1. You can try to type in something more precise, but the game's just gonna round it up. With your zoom sensitivity, the behavior appears to be the same, but the range is limited from 0.1 to 2.0. However, it turns out that even though it visually looks like we're rounding the number, it's not. It's actually using all the digits that you put in there. And we can use this. We can use this to do what I'm calling a zoom sensitivity manip. And of course, I've made a spreadsheet that's going to do the math for you. I'm going to punch in a very particular view angle target here. And I want to hit this exactly. I'm going to select a couple more options. Should be good. So this cell is saying to set your zoom sensitivity to exactly this value, then zoom in with a pistol and do one single dot to the right. That's what this looks like. Now you can see we're at exactly the angle that I wanted, down to the subpixel. As an aside, I've added a new readout to the info overlay to show your exact subpixel ID. So there's two useful things about zoom manips. The first is that you can do any manip using any main sensitivity value. The second useful thing is having a perfect manip down to the subpixel. Of course, there's not any tricks in the run right now that demand that kind of precision, but then I've not really looked into such tricks before because we didn't really have any good way to achieve that kind of precision until now. Anyway, check this out. Pretty cool, yeah? Welcome to the reveal skip skip skip, or RS3 for short. The rest of this video is going to explain how to do it. Oh, and also, here's Camo Jumo Skip Skip. Now the first important thing is that this trick demands using 6.8 sensitivity, because we need to avoid all drift. There are only four subpixels that can give the RS3 telly, and only one subpixel that can give the CJSS. For our zoom sensitivity, you want to type in this value, then press enter. At the Pelican intro, it is very important that you do not move your mouse until the, after the bars are approximately halfway down. Sometime during this long walk, zoom in and do a single dot to the right. It is important that you do not use any zoomed mouse input besides this. With the grenade jump up the hill, you must use a plasma grenade instead of a frag grenade. If you do the shade launch, you just have to avoid getting hit by the frag grenade. Entering it is actually okay. Coming down the lift, we're going to turn to the left after hitting the button. Hold W into the corner. Finally, you need to find a good lineup for the correct angle. I recommend turning on your flashlight and aiming at the horizon and using the lines strobing past you to line up with your reticle. Here's an AR and plasma pistol setup for the video settings that I use. You can use whatever lineup you prefer though. Just hold W all the way down and bam, there you go. Now the first time you attempt this, you're probably not going to get it. Bring up the sensitivity drift overlay in HCM, because there's some super special knowledge about how 6.8 sensitivity works, and I need to teach you. It is possible to avoid all drift while using 6.8, as long as we're careful. Let's have a look at the number line of all possible view angles. 
from 0 to 2 pi radians. In the majority of the range over here, we can overdot or move our mouse as fast as we want and we won't get any drift. It's only as we get very close to the zero boundary that drift becomes possible. So the trick is to memorize where this zero boundary is inside the game world and make sure we turn our mouse slowly through it. While of course maintaining high FPS and all those other things. So to help make it easier to see where the zero boundary is in game, I've added a new overlay to HCM here, the view angle overlay. Now you can set this to any view angle you want, which will help you find lineups quicker, but the default value is at the zero boundary. As we can see, when we're moving the mouse fast near the zero boundary, we can get dots. On the right side, we're totally fine. And anywhere else in the range, still totally fine. It's only on that close left edge. Now I have my FPS locked at 60 to increase the effect. Only on the close left edge of the zero boundary that a subpixel drift is possible. Now in terms of where the zero boundary is in Free for Free Guilty Spark, it's actually in quite an annoying spot. As we come out the start here, the zero boundary is approximately here. But we need to move our mouse slowly while in this region. This is a little annoying at the start, but it gets even worse when we're climbing up the hill here. Just avoid going too far to the right and you should be okay. If you want to do the rock jump instead though, it's actually really difficult with where the zero boundary is. Here's the strat I've come up with, but your mileage may vary. Doing the shade launch under these conditions is particularly brutal. I recommend slowly turning your mouse into the right, and instead of quickly turning to the left during the launch, instead slow turn while strafing left. Coming down the shaft, the zero boundary is exactly parallel with where we're heading. This is bad. We have to do really slow mouse movements throughout this whole button press. The good news is that it's really easy to reach high frame rates in this area. Slowly turn left after hitting the button to land on the edge. Keep in mind that you can move the mouse vertically as fast as you like. Once you're horizontally past about this mark, you should be totally safe. From here on out until after the camo jumo skip, the zero boundary is really easy to avoid while taking a natural path. Well, not quite. When you're going through this zappy hallway here, the zero boundary is right about over here. So just be careful. After doing the RS3, if we're going to go for the camo jumo skip skip, we need to do a separate zoom manip, which means mid-run menuing. This is pretty slow, but I reckon it's still slightly faster than doing the regular camo jumo skip. After the RS3, you want to set your zoom sensitivity value to this. Unfortunately, using copy-paste doesn't seem to work in these fields, so you have to type it in manually. There is one shortcut we can take though. If we do the dot for the zoom manip while in this hallway, we can actually get away with just putting in 1.7 instead of the whole number. After saving, do another zoomed in dot to the right. Turn left after hitting the button for this lift, this avoids zero boundary. Then just hold W into the corner and find your lineup. For my video settings, here's one for the plasma pistol, AR, and shotgun. Well, now that we've got the view angle overlay in HCM, it's actually really easy to find your own setups now. If you add a new view angle and just paste in the subpixel ID for the trick that you're doing at the moment. This is for the camo Dreamer skip skip. Now it should render a line exactly where you need to line up with. So it should be as simple as line up with it. And now you can make your own lineup, try to figure out where the edge of your reticle is and whatnot. Since RS3 only has these four subpixels that work, having pretty much any drift will cause a trick to fail. It is really important you practice avoiding drift at 6.8 sensitivity. With CJSS, there's only one subpixel that works, so having any drift at all will ruin it. Anyway, thanks for watching part two of Burnt Miss. I think the neat thing about these two tricks is I reckon that if you get pretty decent at avoiding drift, you might actually be able to pull this off in full game runs. Of course, this means using 6.8 sensitivity and having to do some mid-run menuing for the zoom sensitivity manip. However, it would save some menuing time if we had 6.8 setups for every other trick in the run. So that's what you can expect in part 3 of the series. We'll see you then.